Hello everyone, so um, let's make two different tutorials about this piece. One is basically general uh, tips that I, that anyone with any level, if you're intermediate or early advanced, you can use it. And another one for more advanced level, I will make maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, we'll see. <laughs> So let's start with rearranging uh, hands and in the middle section try to spread the melody octave line between hands and even though this part is not technically challenging, somehow having the melody right under your fingers helps to reduce unnecessary movements your left hand would make, you know, with all these jumps and it makes it easier to feel freedom while playing, creating this you know, monumental epic image of music. And um, make sure you write down fingering uh, on every octave very carefully and um, make also a clear sound imagination in your mind so your melody wouldn't be lost in, in the chord texture. And also make accents through intonation so you will still feel comfortable while playing. So what I mean is, you know, sometimes, especially if you play something loud and like chord texture or octave texture, if you don't know how to make accents correctly through your internal singing, through the breath, uh, then you will start basically striking the key and eventually it will bring you to the place where your hands will be completely stiff, which is quite opposite to what you actually want to reach in this music, which is, you know, this open statement, monumental, you know, climbing up and completely, you know, losing yourself in this freedom and power. So, just saying that, uh, for example, if you would sing this uh, melody line, uh, you would sing this like, oh, 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 oh. <coughs> my, my throat is not okay today, so I'm sorry. Oh, 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 oh. So when you play, you still play with relaxed hands, but yet you make a very clear accent in your melody. I explained in my previous videos how to make accents, so check it out if you're interested. Uh, for those who don't have wide enough hands to spread all the notes between five fingers, yeah, sure, nothing to do. Um, I suggest this rearrangement and it helps to feel more secure while playing this arpeggiato. Um, and you can still, you know, play this arpeggiato in a fast tempo, which is very nice. So basically left, this is for the left hand, this is for the right hand, and the rest for the right hand. Now you have to make sure that when you play here, on the last note you move your elbow very, very quickly up to the right um, otherwise there is no sense in it because you can play and if you hesitate even a little bit with your elbow and you kind of still in this position when you need to play up there then you will always end up playing something like this so nobody wants this so just shoot it up and the same here and it's very easy you know no harm to your hands to your nervous system all right and um in the beginning uh, again if your hand doesn't feel comfortable to reach uh, this chord uh, i can tell you i can reach comfortably octave but that's it i i might just stray i might stretch to this one but so, um, on the right hand, if you take this G, it's just G8, so it's manageable for me. This I'm playing this with fifth and first finger, and this is just... And the same here. You also don't want to end up playing something like this. about the arrangement let's go to let's go to a pedal nice note so you will be surprised how long you can actually hold your pedal in some parts of this preview let's start with this pitch 
Here you can hold on one pedal pretty much the entire three lines and it won't sound too much, you can check yourself, but of course, <laughs> always make sure that you adjust the pedal to new acoustic of the whole, to new instrument, uh, just use your ears, I guess sometimes clear up your pedal maybe, um, because, you know, you know, <laughs> what was okay on your upright at home might be slightly different. Uh, on a grand, uh, for example, the conservatory class or concert hall, so just be attentive. And in the next part, basically the same, you can hold the pedal through all the wind passages. And, you know, I really want to play them because on my performance I kind of screwed up. I should have memorized them. But, um, yeah. <laughs> on the same pedal um, so you start from here right and then you change and from here and you change on and over there uh, on my keyboard it sounds okay of course when you play in grand piano this uh, overlay with major minor would be a bit too much so in this case just a change change pedal in every bar so you know it wouldn't prevent you from accumulating sound and building up the energy in the music and as you can see on the screen again you can hold the pedal through the entire line uh, it's the same harmony as you can see now talking about different harmonies you see on the first uh, line mm, I actually also hold on one pedal this harmony <laughs> how it works I don't know but I guess when you play something loud um, with repetitive chords it creates this resonance in which all these different harmonies kind of uh, merge with each other and it sounds still okay it just gives you like I said more you know power by accumulating the sound you know? change the pedal more frequently and also in the beginning uh, I can always go from the back to the to the front um, there are also a couple of places where you can use one pedal for different harmonies and again it sounds okay for example here I change here and I play these two beats on one pedal possibility to actually let go uh, either let go B on the in uh, on the top because I mean who have a hand to reach all of this from G to B um, I don't or uh, keep holding like I did and I actually take this low G to my, with my left hand so with my right hand I'm pretty much just play it second Okay, um, I think that's about 
got it. Now let's go to the most interesting part, I guess. Counting in list as a tempo. I never thought I would have to actually force myself to count again, <laughs> but um, well, life is full of surprises. Uh, you have to start filling up your pulse. Um, so, you know, that pulse that you would feel always while playing and who study my system, he knows, will always have a heartbeat in music. For example, over here we would have pretty much like four beats in every bar. So, two, two, three, four, one. Okay. Now, as you can see, red areas are where you would feel four beats in every pulse. Uh, and blue areas are where you would feel three beats in every pulse. So, of course, eventually when you play, you know, with the go with music, you, know, you forget about everything and you go with the phrasing. Um, it will change a little bit your, your rhythm, but essentially it has to be very, very clear for you what you are doing. So, um, let me give you an example how you would count. So, Okay, so red area four counts, blue area three counts. on counting you will lose everything after that music <laughs> it's obvious so that's why it comes in handy to use a system in playing you know when uh, time would be always connected to phrasing lines to uh, emotional image of music um, and still you would uh, you would be able to control dynamics and tone with your imagination all the variety of articulations like accent and tenuta everywhere uh, you know and you control it again through internal singing so it's all kind of organic you don't feel more tense trying to make some articulations and trying to play piano and trying to play uh, steady and rhythm and yet have a melodic line and you know and phrasing and fluency of the melody so um that's why system is very good because you don't miss anything while playing. I think that's about it with the first part and uh, I will go on to the next more advanced one. See you soon. Bye bye.